They're neither luxury flats nor modern office blocks, but believe it or not, soldiers' barracks in Chelsea. Easily the finest in the world, costing the taxpayer two million pounds. The Minister of War, Mr. Profumo, came to have a look round, and soon confirmed his impression that the army of today is a bit of all right. The times when anything was considered good enough for the troops have gone, and any girl who marries an ex-soldier in future will have to be a bit of a genius in the kitchen. Equipped to the standards of the Amateur Swimming Association is the 75-foot swimming pool, though the minister was too busy to try it. The barracks, by the way, are for the guards. Here are some sleeping quarters for officers. Dining room, troops for the use of. Complete with the day's menus for all to see. The two battalions of guards and regimental bands now occupying the barracks aren't going to live on bully stew. When the orderly officer asks any complaints, it would take a brave soldier to come forward. It seems a pity to spoil all this by expecting them to do any square bashing. But guards are guards with the highest training standard in the world. And seriously, soldiers are all the better for being well treated. Tough territory confronted the gold prospectors of 98, disembarking at Skagway, southern Alaska, and facing north to the Klondike, more than 300 miles away. Along that famous trail, a railway now takes tourists to see the country traversed by the gold-hungry pioneers and their pack horses. Pass the brandy. The first train ran here 62 years ago, a tribute to the engineering genius that blasted a track through the northern wilderness. Today's travelers take their ease and enjoy the grandeur as they go. At Inspiration Point, 2,400 feet up, the train stops for tourists to have a look round. There's a monument to the 3,000 pack horses that died on the trail in Dead Horse Gulch. Even in sunny weather, there's a lot of gold rush atmosphere up here. Everything reminds the tourists of what it must have been like in the iron winter 60 odd years ago. The end of the line is at Whitehorse. The way up to Dawson City is by the Yukon River. Most travelers stay here, visiting the museum, handling the gold-bearing quartz such as the miners dug out, if the luck was with them. Fabulous days while they lasted. Laid up now are the stern wheelers that plied the Yukon in far-off days of the stampede for gold. This was a royal day. Her Majesty was to drive from the palace to Westminster to make her speech from the throne and open parliament. This year, the regalia had a place in the procession, the imperial crown, the sword of state, and the cap of maintenance. In the Irish state coach rode the Queen and Prince Philip, Her Majesty in a dress of crystal-embroidered white satin. In former times, the regalia used to be conveyed from the tower to Westminster by river, which entitles the Queen's barge master and a Queen's waterman to ride outside the coach. Trouble here, a mounted sentry throne. Who ordered that man?